I can hello again. Now I can see that you should never keep a Malaysian from their food. So I see people going out and in. So be be quite quick and go out, grab your food and bring some for me up here. I still haven't had breakfast, though. Someone over there lent me a chocolate, which was very kind. So thank you very much. So we're going to start our session. We're just going to bring people up to, to save time. All the speakers come up, and I'll do the introductions when they're all up here. So if all the speakers can come up now and take your allotted seats up here. Aha, yes. Okay, so Andrew, yeah, and come on up here, and I'll introduce you. Oh, Zoe, you'll become a regular feature up here, aren't you? Yeah, you might as well just stay on the stage. <laughs> just doing housekeeping. Uh, and for those, uh, I'm, I'm still responding to all the people who tweeted to me. I'm about a third of the way through. <laughs> There's a lot of tweets, which is wonderful. So I'll eventually get to you all. I'll stay behind at lunch and finish my homework. Without being too biased, I think this is one of the most interesting sessions, influencer marketing. Influencers, so many times when I speak, I speak at these events in a lot of places, Europe, Middle East, and people come up and say, well, how do we find the right people for our brand? How do we do it? And uh, what this will do is this session will give you a great idea on how to find the right people for your brand. I'm just getting the levels on my mic correct. That's better, isn't it? Yep, I'm getting the thumbs up. Yeah, so this is what this session will do, is looking at influencer marketing, what are influencers and how you find them. And we have an illustrious panel sitting beside me here. But the first one will be Andrew. Now, Andrew, <coughs> who's standing over there, Andrew and I met at Malaysia Social Media Week two years ago. And I was so highly, highly impressed with his presentation that when I was invited as a keynote speaker to Finland last year, and they said, nominate someone we haven't seen see speak before. And I said, you have to choose Andrew. So Andrew and I, we went up to minus 20. You were minus 24. I got to minus 40 Celsius. Just think, we're over there in Finland, and we're speaking on social media, and it gets down to minus 40 Celsius. And I can tell you that's really cold. But he is, not only is he a fantastic speaker, he's a fantastic friend. And uh, he is going to start off this session with a very informative speech on influencers versus advocates. So I want you to give an enormous round of applause for Andrew Chow. Thank you. All right. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, more applause. Andrew Chow. Thank right. you. Okay. I understand there's no tea break, but don't worry, we will all be very fast because after that, the conversation carry on on Twitter, right? So, I do not want to introduce myself because if you like to know more about me, you can actually uh, ask a lot of women here who knows about me because I believe that the memory of a woman is better than Google because everything a man says remain on her first page. And that is because the woman memory only has one page, one very long page, right? Okay, I guess you guys are very tired. You guys didn't laugh. All right, so I'm a strategist and I love to set the record straight between a lot of different concepts. I know that a lot of us come here to learn about tactics, tools, and management, but I like to start with the mindset. I like to start with a concept because if you don't get certain big ideas right, you may path that you regret in the long run and backtracking is not in real backtracking in real life is no fun it's not like traveling you know you you treat it as an experience so i like to talk about ambassadors and influencers of course my panel today we have a lot of experts today we'll talk about influencers but i like to talk about the difference between the two important people for your brand how many of you are actually brand owners and you use influencer and ambassadors a lot Right, not many hands. So I gather that the rest of you are influencers. All right, that's very good. So today, if you're an influencer, you can be inspired to be a brand ambassador for a lot of the clients that you've been serving. So influencers to me, in short, are Instagrammers, YouTubers, bloggers. Who are ambassadors? Ambassadors are highly satisfied customers. They're willing to speak for you, sometimes at no cost. 
out of their own initiative. They are super referral offline. Whoever they meet, five out of 10 conversation, it's about you. It's almost like they own your brand. They can be misunderstood as having shares of your brand. Influencers are hired. How many of you want to be hired? No hands, okay. That means you want invited. You want to be an ambassador. Ambassadors are just like mentors in your life. You need to like them, they need to like you. You can't hire them, but you can invite them. You can hire an influencer. Sometimes you invite them, influencer come. Sometimes if you invite them, they send you an email. Okay, again, I'm a brand ambassador of walking or I live lifestyle. They didn't pay me. I like the shoe. I'm wearing one today. It is shoes that give elevated heels to men. It makes tall men taller. <laughs> <laughs> Influencers are defined by the size of the network. You're right. It's a vanity world. Every influencer boasts about how big their Instagram followers are, Twitter follower, Google Plus connections, right? Size of the network. But ambassadors are defined by the strength of their persuasion. They may not be as influential as you online, but they are very, very persuasive. I am a self-professed ambassador of MSNW. Since year 2014, I have been very active. And this year, I persuaded three of my friends from Singapore. Can I have Celestia, Yoki, and Sarah? Where's Sarah? She just at the right time, I know. She's shy. All right, can you stand up? All right, and let everybody know that you are from Singapore. All right, thank you. Influencer carries your message. It is about what is the strategy now based on campaign. What is the message that I want the influencer to pass on to their follower? Ambassadors carry your mission. It's a marathon. It's a far-reaching goal. The mission is what you want to do in the long run. A message is what you want to achieve right now. Influencers, of course, support your campaign. If you have a product launch, you invite influencer, right? I'm sure a lot of you have been invited to a lot of different campaigns. Am I correct? Bloggers, party, open house, and so on. Ambassadors, sustain the conversation. Ambassadors, really, you sustain they sustain your conversation. They talk about you even if you do not have a campaign. In between campaign, in between low period, they keep the conversation going. So, last year, this is what happened. I took a picture. I, again, I brought two friends. Of course, they didn't stay. They just come and listen to me for once. And this year, I participated in the content creation. I did a video without any request from the organizer. All right, uh, can the guys up there be so kind to play this video? All right? Just use the mouse, go over the video, and press the play button. Hello? Okay, never mind, you can find it on Twitter. <laughs> Influencers are motivated by different things. They are motivated to grow your, their audience because when they share about your brand messages, they grow their influence, they grow their followers, they grow their fan base. It's very natural. So, create something that will work in the favor. Make them famous, at least on social media. Give them what likes an impression even though it's for vanity, right? But ambassadors are different. Ambassadors are motivated purely to help their friends. Purely, it's about friendship. Ambassadors are seen many times offline. The commitment level, it's purely social for influencer. They may not be your close business partners, but ambassadors think about the business. The, the commitment level is really strategic. I give you an example. My client, uh, one of the top few dental surgeons in Singapore. We used to have a blogger, 
Estelle, who blogs about Invisalign, the invisible braces. So this is a picture of her giving a talk at the clinic. And you know what is so special about that location? It's actually her birthday. The clinic and her co-organized her birthday in the clinic. She loved it so much that she's willing to use her birthday to spread a message. It sounds almost like someone recently went, won an award, and instead of thanking everyone, he took that stage for another message. Remember that guy? No, you don't remember. Never mind. All right. <laughs> Fans are drawn to influencers because of the personality of their brand. It's okay. A lot of YouTubers are have fantastic personality. I love watching them, but somehow they're a little bit different in real life. Because when I met them, they speak so little. In front of the camera, they are so animated. But when I connect with them in real life, I just find that am I talking to a different person? All right. But it's okay because people are naturally drawn to personality. Personality is really what everybody can see. But a brand ambassador is different. People are drawn to ambassadors because of the passion to your brand. If they love you, they are motivated to speak on your behalf. Labelle. This is my friend, again, my client in Singapore. They are the, one of the top few brighter studios in Singapore. Recently, they purchased a wonderful technology. It helps a lot of couples who are getting married to try on new jackets, new suits, new bridal gown, even without physically trying it on, so that they can select, shortlist the one that they want, and finally go for fitting, all right? So the technology is one, right? I select all the suit that I want and I can see myself how I look like. So, I'm not an ambassador, but on my birthday two weeks ago, I thought I played a trick with my friends. I posted this. If I have 150 likes for this picture, I will show you a video of me in a bridal gown. I say again, if I have 150 likes, I will show you a video of me in a bridal gown. So how many likes do you have? Okay, at the time when I captured this 184, so I had to fulfill my promise, right? So I actually show a video, 11 seconds, of me on a bridal gown. However, the guy, you cannot see it. <laughs> but you can see it on my Facebook, all right? I was wearing up for 11 seconds because I just want to create the message. I just want to tell everyone that it's simple to use, but I'm not the brand ambassador because I wasn't available. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Influencer, I'm coming to the end. They kickstart your product launch. Ambassador, sustain your life, product life cycle. A launch is nothing. Sustainability of the life cycle requires someone to look at your product on a holistic view. Because influencers run from campaign to campaign. You can't for them, it is just the way it is. Last one, my cozy room is an hour of my client. It doesn't move. It's okay, I don't need the slides. There are a lot of brands today that use ambassadors like celebrity to speak on their behalf. It still works till today because people buy people. When people follow you, they, fo they will buy anything you sell. I have one last message for everyone, for the brand owners, for the influencers, for all the brand ambassadors out there today. If you want to move fast, work with influencer. If you want to move far, choose your brand ambassador. Because today, an influencer promoted to an ambassador and today, I think ambassadors need to be like influencers. They, like, they need to be more flamboyant. So, I wish all the influencers a happy journey. Don't just love the brand because they pay you to write a story. Love the brand because it fits your image so much so that you want to be a brand ambassador. Thank you very much for listening to me.
Again, another <laughs> wonderful speech by Andrew. Give him a round of applause. Another round of applause. Let's hear it. <laughs> and it explains why your teeth are so immaculate, Andrew. I worked out you, <laughs> you have a client as a dentist. We are now going to move on to the second speech. This is Anne. Now, <clears throat> I was very fortunate to... Anne and I met in Leipzig, didn't we, in Germany at uh, an event in 2014. And when people were asking me, the organisers here at Malaysia's Social Media Week, who can I recommend from overseas? And just like I recommended Andrew for Europe, I said, you have to get Anne in. <laughs> for, and, and she's finally here in the year. I'm, I'm back here as well. Uh, she's a, a Forbes top 10 social media influencer. Forbes is a magazine, not another Forbes, the Forbes. Her, how many Twitter followers do you have now, Anne? Yeah, how many followers? Over half a million. Now, I'll say that a figure again. Over half a million Twitter followers, and I bet you she did not buy one. No. So if you've got half a million Twitter followers, I don't care what industry you're in, that is a very impressive figure, and this lady has done it. Uh, she is one of the brightest minds I've met in social media, and you are in for a treat, people. So with a speech entitled, How Brands Can Win Top Influencers, this is her first time to Malaysia, so we want to make her welcome. Please welcome Anne Tran. Hello. Thank you, Andrew, for kicking off our influencers chat. How to brands can win top influencer? How can you get a reply to an email? Now, I admit the last thing I say goodnight to is my social media pages, Twitter, Facebook, and so forth. And the first thing I wake up to is also Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and so forth. Now, when I'm looking through my feed and I want to see what content I want to share, the first thing I look at is the title. If the title pulls me in, I'll open the link and I'll read it. And if I like it, I'll share it. As the same with email, the first thing I look at is the subject line. And I'll go through those first before the other ones. So the subject line will pull the person in. So make sure your subject line is enticing and that I will want to open the email and read it and engage with you. Okay, it's not working. <laughs> okay, so with the email, once you get that out, I want to feel warm and fuzzy when I open that email. So when you send me an email, I want to feel that not when I'm looking at the email, and it's only 70% of the email, I'll say, wow. That wow is not like, oh, wow. I really, I'm really, really excited. I want to get in touch with this person and work with this person. So think of the fact that there's an actual person on the other side of the screen and that the influencer is not a billboard and that their pages is a free real estate where they will just, you know, endorse your product and that's all they do. They're very selective. A really good influencer is very selective in what they would choose to share their content. And they were, are much wiser if they have been on social media for many, many years. So when I look at a, an email, I will look at it and say, this is something I want to work with. And be selective because your brand is out there. You don't want to look like an infomercial. Remember that their time is very, very valuable. When you look at the um, time that, let's say if you offer a press trip, and uh, I'm gonna try this again. Okay. Okay, now I'm back on. Okay, the golden rule treat the golden rule is treat others the way you want to be treated. I'm going to just start from the slide. Now, think that the receiver is on the other end. 
how are you going to look at this as far as this, this, is this going to make that person want to join my team? You want to focus on that. How to make a genuine connection? Is there a way to make a genuine connection? Yes, there is a right way to make a genuine connection. And an example is when one morning when I, was, when I woke up on social media, and I was looking at my Twitter page and I saw an ad in my stream from a person that I follow very closely. And the person said, hey, Ann, I have this great project that I'm going to want you to work with me. And I said, that's interesting that he didn't send me a private email and ask me in private. So I said, well, maybe it's something cool. Let me go look at his Twitter page to see what he has to offer. I went to his Twitter page. He sent 50 of these messages of the same content, and I was number 50. Now, when I'm number 50, I don't feel that special. So, you know, when you want to do this, whether it's through email or through direct messages, it would be wise for you to create a personal email. And when you send an email, do some study about the influencer. Just don't send an email say, hey, I have this new app. I would love for you to share it with your followers. Okay, but what, what would my followers get out of this? And also, what do I get in return to share this with my community? So be personable and create some sort of friendship and bond, at least, before you reach out to that person. So don't spam. Spam is not a good idea. I don't understand this with social media sometimes. Like a cocktail party. Let's say you're a lawyer and you go and introduce yourself. The first thing you do, do you say, hey, I'm a lawyer. I would like to be your, you know, to, be, to represent you. No, you don't do that. Same concept with social media, you don't. You, you need to build that bond and relationship before you move forward to the next step. And people forget that, that influencers are not just a number. How to create a win-win pitch. Remember that both parties have to benefit from this. If you are offering me a trip to go away for the weekend, and yes, I, I'm very grateful that you offer me a trip out to, let's say, a B&B, &B, but I drive two, three hours to get there, I give up my weekend, and yes, you're going to dine me, and I'm going to be fed well, but remember, that's my entire weekend away from the family. So the compensation of just providing this, or in the same token where it's a press trip, that program or that um, agenda is date outdated. You have to think of a budget for the influencer. So I understand when you first start out just trying to grow your brand, that's fine, but once you've graduated, move forward, then you might want to ask for that. And a lot of times they don't provide that for you, so ask, always ask. The key thing here is respect. Respect is both ways. So value and respect the social media talent, time, insight, and their skills. Don't forget that. Also, if you're working with influencer, make sure that you set clear expectations so that way there's no miscommunication and that you understand on both ends. I hope that all these tips will help you. I understand that talent, good talent is hard to find, and I hope these tips will help you with your next winning pitch. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm particularly loving how all the speakers are keeping to time. This is wonderful. Uh, and also, I see we've got some people who have joined us in the top balcony. I see a lady with a lovely gold necklace over here. And so, hello to everyone up there. Thank you for attending up in the, uh, the balcony seats. There are people above you. So please don't throw anything under the crowd below. Our third speaker here is a gentleman who started as an intern in 2012 and he has come along, as they say, in leaps and bounds. 
and is now the country manager in the Philippines of Gush Cloud. Now, I can tell you what, if you move that quickly through the ranks, then you have something special. And, and in fact, one of your customers is Samsung, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yeah, you've had Samsung. Well, I might have to speak to you about a phone because uh, yeah, I've had problems with my current one. But this, this man, obviously, is highly, highly talented. And as we've heard before, Malaysia's Social Media Week does bring in people from around the world. We have Singapore here, we have the UK, we have the US, Philippines, and I'm Australian, but I came from Kenya. So look at this, what an international cast we have. But here we have, this time, it's Sian is going to pre present a very interesting speech on the fundamentals of influencer marketing. So please give him a huge round of applause. Hey guys, um, hey, good morning. Um, I'm actually Malaysian, but I'm based in the Philippines, so I've got a, like a dual thing going on. Um, I know it's been a long morning, and um, I think the previous panelists and even the previ uh, previous panel session has really touched on like the, the specifics or the so, sort of um, tactics when it comes to marketing in general, right? Um, I've been in the influencer marketing industry for almost four years now, and it's not a hard industry because I think a lot of my clients, a lot of the influencers that I've spoken to, uh, spoken to uh, a lot of the marketeers, ultimately, influencer marketing is marketing, right? And, and I've titled my, my presentation to be the fundamentals of influencer marketing. And, and my slide is extremely fundamental. There's only four slides. And I'm a, I'm a guy who loves my specifics, I love my numbers, you want workflows, I, I do it up for you. Um, but I think oftentimes we get so caught up in the specifics, um, but we lose track of what is the sort of fundamental when you embark on any marketing channel. Um, be it billboard, be it traditional, be it digital. And I think when it comes to influencer marketing, how should we then really, really look into it? So I, I love Andrew's um, panel session because um, it really touches on a really great area when it comes to um, between influencers and, ambas uh, and ambassadors, uh, what should be the right approach. And Andrew split it out in such a clear distinction of two concepts, but I think like if your business objective is turning influencers into ambassadors, um, and it's possible, and I think a lot of brands are moving into that direction, then I think then uh, it will affect like, all your strategies when it comes to social data. What kind of KPI should you look at? But I want to touch base on the fundamentals. And if fundamentally, marketing is about getting people, right? Um, and it's either getting people to buy a product, getting people to visit your website, getting people to, to know about your brand, being, being the symbol of happiness, that's Coca-Cola, or, or, you know, or, or understanding the, the concept behind every product, behind P&G, Procter & Gamble, is that my products are out there to make lives better, right? Once you have that fundamental, and, and knowing that who you want to sort of reach out to, it will boil down, uh, and your influencer choice will be very, very clear. Um, and we're in Malaysia, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fundamentally rich cultural um, and racial um, country. We have um, three major races, and we have so many other diverse races as well. And understand, and, and a lot of times, all these different races are, are broken down into different demographics, psychographics. Um, the Mandarin speaking Chinese read certain kinds of newspaper. And there's all these um, English literate um, um, urban crowd that, that uh, consumes a different kind of media. And once you're very, very clear about your business objective, what do you want them to do? And then um, identifying who they are, your influencer choice becomes very, very clear. Because influencers, if you go back to the fundamentals, is basically a leader of a culture or a subgroup, right? Um, if I go to a skate park and I look at a bunch of skater boys or skater girls, I will, and I will kind of identify like a leader in the pack. Because what they wear or what they do or what they say, and you'll hear it recurring throughout the members. And that's ultimately what influence is about. It's just that with social media, now it's being defined as a, um, that your influence concept is now being defined as a social media influence. It becomes numbers, right? How many followers, how many engagements do they get? So 
ultimately identifying, going back to the fundamental, who are we looking at, um, who does your business want to target, and what do you want to do, will then boils down to which influencers will be the right choice um, for, for your business or for your campaign or specific project. And so I think like, fundamental is very important. And, and sometimes, you know, I want to target a specific niche group, let's say the, the mummies, right? I want the moms to start endorsing this new water filter. But at the same time, I know that the moms will believe what the general society thinks. So sometimes your who or your target audience could be, uh, or target consumer could be a wider group, which is everybody. Um, and, and to a brand, yeah, I want everybody, right? I've heard that so many times. Um, but also understanding who are your specific niche sort of target groups that you want will then drill down to what kind of influencers that you want to get. So some, and influencers shouldn't just be defined by social media reach. Of course, there's a certain minimum base, right? Because they're, they're being hired and you should treat it like a marketing channel as well. So based on what kind of metrics, if you're looking at reach, then okay, I will look at a certain pool of influencers, but if I'm looking at specifically reaching out to the mummy advocates, and know that they're, they're not necessarily like with your half a million followers like Anne, but they have like 10,000 and they hang out in cafes and brunch every Sunday, then those influencers will be my choice as well. It will be your choice. It should be our, our, our sort of um, recommendation to our clients as well. I guess once you've identified the who, then I would like to go into the, the what, which, uh, sorry, thank you. So, and, and identifying what do you truly want your target consumer to do? Of course, to buy a product, right? That's the ultimate end goal. But if I today tell you, hey, can you buy this now? Uh, it's at this price. Would you want it? Would you want it? Um, nobody would want to buy it. Um, but there is a process, um, and we call it the purchase funnel, right? Which is, before I even want to buy something, I need to know that it exists. Um, once I know it exists, I need to know that what does it do and how does it relate back to, to, to what I need. Right? Ultimately, I want to buy things that I need and want, right? Um, I buy an iPhone because it's a phone? No, but um, it, it comes with different, different functions, right? So once you, once, once you go through the purchase funnel and identifying the steps that you really want them to do, then it will affect how you engage your influencers. So I'm sure, I mean, ha, um, I've saw like a few hands, uh, maybe everyone's very shy, but um, if you have worked with influencers before, there's so many different ways of working with them. And when blog first came out back in 2006, we saw this rave, this wave of um, product reviews coming out. Um, it was basically what these brands do is they send out products to bloggers or, or YouTubers, and you know that you see unboxing videos, you see like product reviews, right, and blogs, right. But um, and that's just like the first phase, right, getting your product out there and getting people to know your product, but getting them to consider buying your product when a need arises, that, that turns into a different tactic. And I, I like to call it conversation planning or even content planning, right? Because um, it's no longer about knowing a product exists. It's also about how does it fit into someone's day-to-day -day life. Um, you know, how does the iPhone help me manage my, my day as a business person? Or how does it help me manage my, um, my, my life as a mom? And, and those things are amplified through content and conversation. And because social media has evolved such, it's no longer a lengthy blog post and editorials, it becomes micro bite size. Um, and and, and that, that translates into like tweets or Instagram or even Facebook posts. And, and now we have Snapchats coming up and uh, we're doing something exciting with Snapchat. But I mean, when, when my, my client asked me, hey, should I go into Snapchat with influencers? And I said, okay, um, what's the ultimate end goal here, right? Because Snapchat's demographic right now is quite young in Malaysia. And, and uh, the brand that actually asked me was actually SK2, which is uh, quite a premium cosmetic brand. I was like, do you want to look cool towards the younger crowd, plant the seed in their head so that they will, when they have the income, they'll buy it, or do you really want to convert them to buy it now? Because then, based on that business objective, it will then um, identify, should I use influencers via Snapchat or by like a certain kind of medium? It all differs. So identifying that what really is important 
And instead of, yes, I mean, sometimes, you know, I just want people to know, but I think, think truly as a consumer yourself, what do you want to know about a brand? And then work your way backwards. It will then affect your exact house strategy, which brings me to my next slide. So um, I think Chris is familiar with this. Um, that is actually a, um, so when GSD came out last year, so we actually did like a YouTube video and it was basically um, to echo like how Malaysian was complaining about GST, right? Everyone was talking about how GST is making prices rises. And um, I think back then was um, Domino's one, uh, I mean, Domino's brief to us was very clear. It was, so I want everybody to know that my prices stays the same. And to me, that's a specific brief, right? It's very, very clear. They know that they want everybody. Okay, great. Everyone wants everybody. Uh, but the, the what that they really wanted to do was, I want people to know that my prices are the same when everyone else is increasing theirs. So then, then with that brief, uh, we, we sat back, we, we thought about it, and we say, hey, instead of using your celebrities, um, because um, they, they might not be at a position where they really feel the pain of a GSD increment, we're gonna stick to influencers, right? Um, and the mass influencers in large quantity because everyone's complaining about it. We wanna position the brand to jump on that conversation, but true influencers bring out the fact that, hey, um, everything is increasing in price, I'm gonna go for things that are staying the same and therefore build that relationship with the brand. So we actually created like a, a YouTube brand um, of this YouTuber, and the reason why we use YouTube is a lot of reason. She is she has the most reach on YouTube. That's one, and also um, GSD has become an emotional um, issue, um, and therefore video captures emotions the best, right? And we want to echo that same sentiment. Therefore, uh, you know, a, a YouTube video was created. But of course, you guys are familiar with blog reviews. Um, and now there's, um, you know, there's a concept called social seeding whereby it's the same conversation, same content, but it's broken down into little, little micro bits and you spread it out across um, Facebook pages, Instagram, or even Twitter. Um, but of course that conversation needs a deeper understanding of, of your who and what. Because once you know a who, a person is interested in many, many things, not just a brand, not just a need. Um, I have emotional needs, I have psychological needs, and, and that translates into conversations. Yeah. Um, well, I'm happy to take this you know, Q&A session, um, but uh, the reason why I kept it so brief is because I think when we go into influencer uh, marketing, understand that it is marketing after all. It is a discipline of marketing. Ultimately, it's about getting people to do something that you want them to do, and therefore will affect the how. So the who, the what, the how, we need to ask ourselves that fundamental once again, but think in layers. Um, and then it will guide you into a very, very clear influencer strategy and you can apply all the social data um, tools that you have to really then measure the success. Because once you know what your business wants to do, the metrics is clear. The metric is clear in the sense that, yes, I want foot for, I want sales, but, how, but I know that sales doesn't happen when I tell them to buy it. What are the intermediary steps? Is it likes, is it impression, is it views? Is it like um, conversation or brand mentions? Um, those things will fall into place. So yeah, um, and lastly, um, if it's too much of a hassle, you can always reach out to me, um, uh, Rangash Cloud here, uh, how brands uh, plan all these different, different strategy. So yeah, um, thank you very much, thank you for your time, and yeah, happy to take it on discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we come to our fourth and final speaker of this session. Now, we've seen her before. In fact, Zoe, you have been up here more on the stage than anyone else. And the trend continues. Uh, she, it's the first time I've seen Zoe speak. And not only is she a wealth of information, but so articulate. I could listen to you speak all day. No wonder you get, you're in demand around the world for the way you speak and the knowledge you possess. Uh, but this time, Zoe is speaking about... Finding influencers. So please welcome Zoe Cairns. Thank you, Shane. Oh, come on, more applause. <laughs> come on. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Um, it is a pleasure to be here with you all, and um, everyone's been so welcoming and friendly. So thank you for the opportunity of me standing in front of you. Um, I'm going to be talking about finding the right influencers, and I want to take you back to um, a, a really short story about. Um, about 
six years ago, um, it was actually more than six years ago, I used to be a mortgage broker. And I come out of mortgage broking. I actually used Facebook to build my, uh, my database of customers um, through Facebook. And I decided that I preferred to use social media more than I liked writing mortgage applications. So I decided to go into the world of social media and become a consultant. But I was like, on the Friday, a mortgage broker. And on the Monday, I was a social media consultant. So I had to um, tell my, my community of the change in which I transi transitioned into. And it was a really difficult process. So the way that I overcome it was that I thought, I'll find some influencers within the target audience that I want to get out to, who are, of whom I want to be potential clients. So I'm going to share with you how I started to find the influencers to help me build my community in helping me now become an influencer within my field. So I'm going to share with you some tools I used and, and the tactics that I used. Um, so it's a little bit of a strategy on how to find the right influencers for your brand or your ca campaign or your company. So first step is to think about who are your target audience. Who are your target audience? Now, um, first of all, I mapped down who they were. I didn't just put they might be female, 25, um, and live in, for example, Kuala Lumpur. I, I thought about what magazines do they read? What TV shows do they watch? What local attractions might they visit? Um, I thought about um, what other people would they currently be following online? What other bloggers would they, would they follow? Um, I really broke it down, and I've got something called a target audience sheet that you can download to actually map this out, and I'll get Gareth to tweet it out in a moment um, on the hashtag. Um, and this will map down your target audience for you to then begin now to find the influencers of whom they're already listening to. So let's take an example. I was trying to find local businesses of who I could start to work with, of whom I could help them build their following, who I could help them build their, their return on investment on their social media, who wanted to find more clients, more leads, and generate more income. So I thought about who are the local businesses already following in my area? And I thought about the local chambers of commerce, Kent Invicta Chamber of Commerce, it was called. And I looked at the Kent Invicta Chamber of Commerce and I noticed that they had something called membership coordinators. And I thought, oh, OK, they're sitting in front of businesses on a daily basis and they're signing them up to become a member. And I found the membership coordinator of the chamber on Twitter. And I found her on there. Her name's Louisa Felsted. I followed her. And I also connected with her on LinkedIn as well. And I just said on there, you know, I noticed that you're the membership coordinator of the chamber. I'd love to connect with you. Um, could we meet for coffee? So my strategy then was that I'd connect with them. And I'd then, if I could, take the relationship offline. And I got in front of her, and she's now one of our ambassadors. She recommends people to us all the time, businesses that will use our services. But the way in which I found her is I, I actually broke down my target audience of who they are. I then found who they would be currently listening to or they'd be following online. And I then went and connected with her. So it's about really brainstorming who your target audience are. So. Once you actually analyze who the target audience are, think about who the influencers might be. This doesn't mean to say that you'll know who their names are right now. It doesn't mean to say you'll know who, the com who they work for, um, who they are. I'm just thinking about they might be fashion bloggers. They might be uh, fashion editors in magazines. They could be um, fashion people, that um, image consultants. We've got Chris... Um, um, Celestine in the audience here is an image consultant. So it could be someone like that might be an influencer. But all you need to do is break down who they could be. So fashion bloggers, image consultants, etc. It's then that you can start to use tools to find those people, which I'm going to share with you in a moment. But who could the influencers be? Now, lots of people, when they start a campaign and they, they want to they wanna find influencers, they start to overwhelm themselves with too much information. And they think, oh, I'll connect with 20 influencers. When you first start out with this exercise, I recommend that you just brainstorm maybe three or four 
Okay, especially if you're doing it on your own. I know there's a lot of bloggers in the room or that there's also a lot of organisations, but just start small in small chunks and work it up. Okay, so you need to brainstorm about three to four influencers. And you're not going to know their names or who they are just yet. You're just going to brainstorm who they could be. Then you need to find them. Okay, and this is the... Uh, back then, I had started to use Twitter and LinkedIn and um, other tools, but there are tools out there now that will help us find those influencers, find the people that could really get our message out to the masses. And what I love about influencers are that they've already got a lot of credibility within the industry that you're trying to get out to, trying to get your message out to. So when I first started, no one knew me in the area as a mortgage consultant, and I really wanted to build my credibility, and I really wanted to establish who I was with in the area I was in. And I've used this same concept to get to be known across the world in different places. I'm, I'm, I'm now becoming an influencer within Dubai, and I've also actually built my presence up within the UK, probably faster in Dubai than I did the UK, actually, because it was quite dominant. Um, social media consultants are, are quite big in the UK, but I'm now at number seven. I'm nearly getting up to number one. That's out of 500 people. So again, it's about really thinking about who can help you spread your message quickly, who's got a lot of credibility? That's a, that's a real influencer. So with the influencers, you've got to make sure that they are already being listened to online before you start to engage with them. And that, that's the, the challenge that I had back then until I started to use these tools that I'm going to mention to you now. So the tools that I use are the following on the screen. And you might have different tools that you use. You might have tools that are already established here in, in, your, in your country. You might, um, we've, we've heard from Brandwatch today. We've heard from CrowdTangle. Um, there's, there's lots of tools out there. But these are the ones that I specifically used. I used Clout. So with Clout, you can put the, um, the topic in, and it will show you all the, um, the people that are influencers within that field. Now, the Clout score is not about vanity. This is what I mentioned to you earlier. It's about the people that are being listened to. So Clout will look at that person's social media profiles and have a look and give them a score out of 100. And it's not just down to how many followers they've got. It's down to how many mentions. It's down to how many shares, how people are engaging with them. Now, if they've got a higher Clout score, it means that they are an influencer within their field. They are being listened to. So Clout's a really good way of finding influencers all over the world within certain industries that you want to find influencers in. Follow a Wonk is another one. It's a great place to come and find people within a certain location. So I love this. We worked with a, um, a fashion person up in the city in London, and they wanted to find all fashion bloggers within London. Okay, so I could go on Follow a Wonk, you go on search bios at the top left on follow a wonk and you can go on there and say fashion blogger in London and it shows you all the fashion bloggers in London. It's an amazing tool. It's a free tool if you don't log in. Okay, the trick is don't log in to follow a wonk. Okay, you just go on to search bios at the top left, type in flash fashion blogger put the location in, and it will show you the influencers within that field. And it's also got their social authority score, which is a bit like the clout score. It tells you how high their social authority score is, which means their influence score, how, they're being, um, how people are listening to them, if they're an engager or they're an influencer. It's a great tool to use. The other one I used was the Twitter advanced search. We use that for a lot of our clients that want to find influencers within their field. Again, a free tool you can use. You know, think of the term that you're going to use. If it's fashion blogger, put it in, travel blogger. Um, the advanced tool's really good. And have you heard of, um, have you heard of Zapier? Hands up if you heard of Zapier before. Wow, you've got to check Zapier out. So what this does, if I want to um, find um, someone that's talking about travel um, within Kuala Lumpur, um, Zapier will look at Twitter and it will say, if someone tweets travel within a certain location, could you text or email me? It's great for um, warm leads. It's fab. Zapier is Z-A-P-I-E-R. Zapier. 
okay? Give that a go. It's a really great way to find influencers, people that might have just come out on social as well that you want to connect with. Or if you want to be, um, you want to find a particular keyword that's said on, on, on social media straight away, it lets you know straight away as well. So one of our terms is someone that might say, can you recommend someone that look after you, my social media profiles? And it, tweet, it, it, will, it will text me straight away when someone mentions that on Twitter within my area. Okay, so it's a really great tool. Um, the other one is Buzzumo. I love looking at Buzzumo for influencers. I look on there up at the topic in. It tells me what articles are, um, are being mostly shared online and have got a lot of influence. And I have looked to see who's been writing them. I use Google, so I might put in there the top 10 bloggers on travel. So hopefully I'll, now I'm, I've met Anne from the, the States, I'll, I can identify Anne now. But Google is great for looking at the top influencers within a certain field. I love using Google as well. It gives me a variety of options there. And also LinkedIn. LinkedIn Advanced Search is a little word at the top of the search of LinkedIn that says Advanced. If you click on there and you want to find all the fashion bloggers within a certain area or within the world, you can actually just put, um, put that in. It's a free tool again to use. It's a great way for finding influencers. And there's probably some tools that I've missed out. But I'm only dedicated to a certain amount of time. So these are the ones that I feel have helped me in my journey. Um, just to give you an example, I used um, Follower Wonk. Um, I've, I've um, been on BBC and ITV back in the UK, and um, my goal was to appear on TV probably about 18 months ago. And I thought, I need to find an influencer that can help me get in front of these TV people. Um, I need them to help me with that goal. And I used Follower Wonk to find all the BBC editors and journalists within a certain area and with ITV. I found one lady that I then met face to face. We had a conversation online. I built up rapport with her. She shared my content. She said, Zoe, it's about now time we, we met. So I met with her and that's how I then landed the TV um, commentator role um, that I experienced back in the UK. So it definitely does work. Influencer marketing is an absolute amazing concept for you to work in social media. It's one of the ones that's worked the most for me and I've got the most of my return on influence and investment from influencer marketing. So remember, it's about building a relationship. It's about building a know, like, and trust with these people. It's not about spamming or selling to them. It's about how you would, how you would actually treat someone out in the registration area when you have lunch. You network with each other. You build a relationship with them. You don't go up to someone and say, you must buy my product. And that's what you mustn't do online. Anne was mentioned about the guy that you know, sent her a message, but he'd also sent it to 50 other people. You know, Imagine someone out in the registration area, they're all going up to us trying to sell to us. People will just switch off. You don't want to be a number. You want to have a, a, a good relationship with someone. You want to build, uh, feel valued. It's about really building up that relationship. And always create great content because even when you're building that relationship with them, believe me, influencers will still be having a look back at your content because they want to share your content. They'll find you at, they want to be, um, they want to share your content if you do create that great content. It's all about videos and pictures right now. It's about writing great stuff. It's about sharing your best content. You know, share three times as much value as your competitors and people and influencers will want to work with you and build that relationship with you. And that's it. I've gone on to another slide. I don't know what happened there. So hopefully, so just take those steps. Um, I'll send out the link of where you can download the target audience sheet as well to really brainstorm that. And I've also put on there my free workbook of putting together your strategy for influence marketing. And I hope that's helped you in how to find your influencers. Thank you. Zoe, you are a star. <laughs> that was tremendous. A, a couple of points I just want to bring up from that and then we'll open up for questions just for a few minutes and then we'll get you to lunch, is that I've noticed how you term yourself, and I gave a speech about this in uh, Utrecht, in lovely Netherlands, in January, where I said, if you're a blogger and you want to be seen as an influence, 
What do you term yourself? And most people say, well, I'm a travel blogger, I'm a food blogger, and a fashion blogger. Well, actually, that term really doesn't describe what we do. So, for example, I do radio work. I do radio work for Dubai Eye and uh, Sabah Tourism. Well, I'm going to interview you after, so you know where to find me. And I have a regular segment on American Forces Radio, which reaches more than 180 countries, and Bondi Beach Radio. I did ABC in Australia yesterday here as well. And and I do travel photography, so blogger doesn't actually describe what I do. So what you call yourself is important because when people are searching for you, you have to be quite, uh, quite expressive in what you're doing. So I always put, that's why I describe myself as a travel photographer, you've seen my photography, and a radio personality because I do a lot of radio and blogging doesn't describe what I do. So that's a point that I just raised. So do we have any questions any questions from the audience? I know we're approaching lunch. Come on, at least let's have one question. And if not, then I've got one for each of the panellists. Any questions? Maybe I'll move forward. That might encourage people or scare people. Uh, any questions? Yep, a question at the back. I saw a hand come up right at the back. Yes, sir. J just, yep. yep. Come up and the microphone is coming to you right now. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Mohamed Faris. I'm from Malaysia. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate you guys for being here and for, you know, greeting me nicely here. And my question is, how to know that your prospect have the purchasing power? Okay, the question is how to know that your product or your influence or what you're doing has purchasing power. Has, is that correct? Yes. Yes, okay. Who would like to answer that? So, um, how your product? How do you? How can power? you show that what you are offering has purchasing power? Uh, has sorry, that I'm influence? Sorry. No, no. Actually, uh, yes. no. I've got that wrong. Sorry. Uh, how to know that your prospect, your your customers, your clients, have the purchasing power ah. to buy your product? How do you know that your clients, so the people within your market, have the purchasing power? So you have an audience. How can you determine that? And okay. Andrew's chomping at the bit here. No. I'm excited to answer that question because I know the answer, but you reminded me of something that the previous panel, Crystal, said, that a lot of data that you need on social media, listening and monitoring can't be answered. So, how do you know someone has a purchasing power? I don't think anybody will put their gross income on their profile. They will not show you their bank statement. Okay, you can only infer by the questions that they asked. That is my short answer to your very difficult question. And number two, I think that is where you have to activate your ambassadors out there to do the active ground listening. Because these people will be talking to the target audience. And these people that the ambassadors are talking to actually forms your real fan base, your offline fan base. Online is great. I'm a firm believer of that, but I think offline is equally important. Offline gives you the real sentiment. If you believe in election, you know what sentiment is, right? Singapore, we have the same issue. So I mean, Malaysia I can talk about Singapore now. That on social media, everybody is complaining about the government. You didn't do this, you didn't do that. But you know what? The election result is super good. So how do you determine whether the sentiment on social media is really what you want. So even though the, I think Twitter, I think Twitter analytics shows you the income level if I'm not wrong, but I'm not sure how they, re, how they derive that. Uh, um, I think that is not a very good gauge. You can only infer by the question that they asked you. Can I, can I just add yeah. on to that? Uh, of course you can, Yeah, um, I would, um, before you even look from the, from your, what you're trying to do. So, you know, when, when you, you um, look at people's challenges, so well, if, if you've met me out in the reception, I always say, what's your challenge? And it's about looking at what your audience need and then catering that product or service to the audience. And I would maybe do something like, I don't know if you've got it here called Survey Monkey, putting a survey together and asking your audience as to what they do need, what's their challenges, putting a survey out and doing a campaign. And then that campaign will then drive what your product or your service will cater for. And then that's them 
the, what they actually require. Does that, does that make sense? So help having a, a campaign survey that will help create a product or service that your audience actually need will then increase the opportunity of the purchasing. Is that, does that make sense? Yeah? Great answers. And thank you for that excellent question. Do we have one more question from the floor? And I see a gentleman down here, so therefore you are our second question. So, yep, but yeah, that, you, yep, you on pointing, yep, with the, with the stripes, that's you. <laughs> so come up to the microphone, or we'll get a microphone past you. Just put your hand up. So, yep, here it comes. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Rohi. Um, okay, uh, my question is, let's say we are a startup, and then... Um, Shall we build a social influencer or a social ambassador? Great question. Startup, social ambassador or social influencer? I'm going to start with Andrew because that was the topic of his talk. Oh, sorry. Well, the first thing I want to tell you is, I repeat the last statement that I had. If you want to go far, you use an influencer. You want to go far, be, find the ambassadors. And actually start up... The management team, the founder, must be the first ambassador. I think that would guarantee 50% of the success story. Because most startups, some of the startups, I won't say most, some of the startups founder are so media shy, so low profile, that they don't want to be the face of the company, and they prefer to outsource that relationship to an outsider. It's almost like a man telling me he wants to outsource his love life to another man. <laughs> he asking another man to love his wife when he's busy, when he's not so busy, he come back and love the wife. It will not happen this way. So if you are a startup, you must be the first brand ambassador. You can create the journey and the roadmap for other brand ambassadors. You come up with the strangest analogies, Andrew. Uh, <laughs> does that answer your question? Answer your question? Do I get a get answer your question, sir? Ah, uh, yes. Great. Okay, thank you. I think I'm going to ask one quick question. I want everyone here, just quick, and then we're going to lunch. Tell us, and we'll start from the far end, tell us the biggest mistake, one sentence only, the biggest mistake people have, brands have, and influence in finding influencers, and what's the number one bit of advice? What to avoid and what to do? Just very quickly, each one, two, three, four. We'll start with Andrew. Okay, brand communication, can brand communication journey is a marathon. It's never a sprint, so you need stamina, longevity, find an ambassador, and then work with an influencer. Okay, from personal experience, I think when I first started out, it was um, running too quickly, thinking that I was the influencer already when I wasn't. So it is about finding the ambassadors first. So the guy that mentioned about the startup, you know, it's, it's the, your outcome is that you want to be an influencer, but find the ambassadors first, like I did with the chamber. And I got the people to recommend me, which then built me up as an influencer. So don't run into it. Just make sure you find your ambassadors first. It's not about the numbers or the impressions. It's about the storytelling. That's what you need to focus on. Oh, and yeah. um, I had a particular client that was focusing on just impressions. And I said, that's a wrong idea. That's a bad, bad idea. Mm -hmm. And she didn't listen to me. Fast forward, they had to redo the program. And they were focusing on storytelling. Excellent. Um, I think ultimately influencers or ambassadors or advocates are people. And because of that, you can't treat it like it's a media. Um, it, because it's people, I agree, storytelling, uh, but I always call it like content conversation um, and even like uh, the consumer. Ultimately, how does that pe uh, another person uses another person to speak to that person that you really want? So think of them like people, like your friends, your family. Um, think from your own perspective, um, and whatever you do will fit in uh, really well. Yeah. Excellent. And with that wonderful piece of advice from all of our wonderful panelists that take us into lunch, I'd like to give you, I'd like all of you to give them a collective thunderous round of applause. Oh, yeah, that's what we like to hear. And just to remind you again that uh, Andrew. Anne and myself, we're doing the workshop, aren't we, on Friday? Ooh, so if you like what you see, you come back on Friday. And uh, we have a lot more detail. We've each got an hour, so a lot more time for us to explain what we do and how we do it. Again, 
Uh, fantastic honour to be on the stage here. And I'll hand back to our host with the most. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up again for our panellists.